Phantoms of Asia, Contemporary Awakens the Past, is on display at the Asian Art Museum from May 18 to September 2, 2012. It is the first major exhibition of contemporary art organized by the museum. Visitors will find themselves in an immersive environment, offering insights into the belief systems and mythologies that have shaped Asian culture over the ages. For the visitors seeking answers here to questions of life and death, Phantoms of Asia may provide an unexpected meaning. This exhibition provokes questions. What is life? What is death? In this way, for the viewer who demands final answers, Phantoms of Asia may live up to its name in an unexpected way, leaving you wondering about the inexpressible long after you've left. Uh, my vision for the Asian Art Museum is to connect art to life. Our, our museum is a treasure house of ancient works of art, but I like to build a contemporary art dimension, so make art storytelling continuous from ancient times to the right of the moment we speak. Thus is the beginning and the reason of why we do this show. And the show is called Phantoms of Asia, Contemporary Awakens the Past. You know, so we could use contemporary perspective to look at ancient art to enjoy new understanding, as well as using ancient perspective to look at the contemporary art to see how influenced, how inspired our art, contemporary artists are, are by the traditions of their upbringing. Why is the Asian understanding of death so important to the appreciation of life? I think, you know, Asian have a pan Asian the lotus is a wonderful symbol, which is the largest piece of our exhibit. And it's now installed in the civic center. And nobody can miss it. And as we know, lotus is a symbol of a spiritual awakening and renewal. So I think the one part of the pan Asian spirituality is about renewal. Renewal in the physical sense, renewal in the spiritual sense, whether you take different form of reincarnation or different forms of continuation, life in one way or another continues. So that's very important. Death is only one stage of life. I see. Uh, how can contemporary artists uh, convey this idea in a way that has not been conveyed before in the past? For example, we are in this room, in the backdrop is a, a work of art done by a Singaporean artist, He Man Chang. What he did actually is a calendar. It's a calendar from uh, this year onwards for the next 30, 40 years. So each um, small piece of this big collage is one month. So he's sort of mapping out the life for the next 30, 40 years. And very interesting that he takes pictures of particular locations in Singapore. But actually they are sort of nondescript. You cannot really tell which that space is. He wants to ask us a question. 30 years, 40 years from now, will life still be the same? and how the human interaction with the environment. Because you will notice, none of the photos have humans in it. Sort of give you this alien sense. Where is our space? The space today will be the same as space 30 years later? So she is asking this question. So art is very much about ignite, questioning, conversation, and dialogue. So I think looking at this art, I myself could try to contemplate what our life will be. Will it be the same that I'm looking at today, or will it be different? What is my imagination? What will be my aspiration? I think each and every one of us could do, go on a journey, be engaged with art, and engage with art in this way. Well, Dr. Xu, thank you so much for making the uh, purpose of this exhibition so much clearer for us. Thank you. Thank you. Hiroshi Sujimoto has created works in his Five Elements series that are constructed as shrines to a primordial birthplace using geometric symbols from 13th century Buddhism. The sea, the air, origins of all life are seen through a prism 
of ancient Buddhist views of the universe. Every time I view the sea, I feel a calming sense of security, as if visiting my ancestral home, he says. I embark on a voyage of seeing. by the fact that many of the uh, Asian beliefs um, share the idea of uh, thinking about the uh, larger cosmos as a Brahman or macrocosmos. And there is another cosmos in, inside your body, it's a microcosmos or Atman or yourself. And the uh, larger cosmos and your body is always connected with invisible energy. And uh, in Chinese, it's called a qi, like qi gong, and in Japanese, it's called a ki. So this invisible energy is all around, and you are always aware. And I was interested in seeing this uh, Indian cosmology painting from this museum's collection, and seeing the twins having the micro microcosmos in their bodies, and connected with the larger cosmos. And it's always quite uh, geometrically or mathematically analyzed. And you can see the similar idea of the depicting a construction of the universe in Tibetan Tanka uh, for those, those two works. And then also I was fascinated by the Chinese mirrors here we have in this uh, piece. Um, most of the time in the museum they show this decorated part and some of, the, some of them are depicting the structure of the universe again with square and slack rules and all this uh, geometric depiction of the universe. And on the other hand side, uh, we have only one uh, facing to you, is uh, we polished and so we can imagine how people used to actually use, use it as a functional mirror. But also not only seeing your face, but also the mirror function to reflect the entire like, real universe. And then here we have uh, Pokanon Anadi, the artist from Philippines, and he asked ordinary people to hold this round mirror and just to reflect the sunburst. And the light is, of course, a very important part to create photography, but also to go back to the origin of the consciousness, how people started to uh, realize or uh, be aware of yourself. So uh, these ideas all together, I think, are very well connected. And then this idea of invisible energy that is connecting <coughs> ourselves and cosmos, had been always uh, introduced in the uh, deities in the collection.
My name is Lin Chen Ju from Taiwan. Uh, this time I bring four paintings to join this show. And uh, I think the landscape painting is uh, really hard to explain. I think uh, it's beyond the language. Um, so they say um, most of my oil painting is uh, basic on a series of uh, uh, sketches. Uh, every time I, I'm making a sketch for those oil painting, uh, in front of the landscape, in front of the, the real mountain, um, I try to forget myself. And, you know, I, I, I try to uh, forget myself and I'm not, a, I'm not a human being anymore. I, I feel myself as a combination of material, like uh, water, like my blood, like air of my breath. So and at the same time, I can really feel, I can sense the landscape itself is also a combination of beautiful air, clouds, water, trees, rocks. And, and later, I feel the landscape and me become one. So that's, that's what my landscape is trying to re represent. Um, those two paintings about rocks. Uh, I think the rock is a very unique topic in my culture. It's the less a lot of myth about rocks, about a lot of uh, imagination or about a, a lot of stories about uh, the rocks. So this painting, I paint a book uh, uh, and then become, it, it is a cloud closing uh, closing up from the book and then a rock from the cloud. So totally it's my imagination. And uh, the other one, this one, I really want to say um, nowadays the, pe the people want to you know separate from something. You know, everyone want to, to be an individual, everyone want to separate it from something. But I, I try to say, um, try to re reunite uh, two different things, become one. So you can see a cloud, there's two clouds, and underneath there's two rock, but finally become one. So that's my simple idea to paint this oil painting. <laughs>